to the first lecture of carbon materials in manufacturing. Hmm. Okay. Now, before we start talking about carbon materials specifically, this in this lecture, I'm going to discuss briefly about what are materials hmm, and what are the properties of the materials that we need to know before we start thinking of manufacturing something. Hmm. What is manufacturing? Manufacturing is just making something. Hmm. And for making something, you need to know certain fundamental properties of the material. Hmm. What are these properties? So let's think about, um, you know, let's take an example of uh, uh, an iron uh, material, hmm, cast iron, any kind of iron, steel, also alloy. Hmm. Now you want to make some shape out of it and you want to perform casting. Hmm. Now, what do you need to know when you perform casting? Number one, you need to know uh, what kind of, uh, what is the melting point of your material? What kind of crystal structure uh, does it have? Will there be any phase transition change in the crystal structure when you heat it to, uh, you know, a very high temperature? If it is a steel, then what kind of steel it is? What are the, what is the hardness of the steel? What so all of these properties, what kind of defects do you have? All of these things you need to know. And also you need to know the properties of the material in order to understand the application. You know, why are you making certain structure using iron? Hmm. Maybe because of its mechanical strength, maybe because of its electrical conductivity, maybe because of certain other properties. So all of these things you need to know. And how do we, um, you know, how do we learn about these uh, properties? Hmm. Okay, now think about carbon. The very fundamental thing about carbon, something very important for this entire course, huh, is that carbon is not one unique material. Hmm. or even so it is an element it's a unique element hmm. atomic structure remains the same but you have several different carbon materials and that is because the definition of materials itself is a very general definition any uh, you know any element or uh, any alloy or any compound can be called a material as long as you have a uniform structure at a molecular level Hmm. Uh, so this means that, uh, you know, if you take two samples of the same material, you should be able to get the same properties. Hmm. And that is when you call it a material. And especially when it comes to manufacturing techniques, then we, the material term is used in a very, uh, you know, very broad way. Everything is called a material. Hmm. Anything tangible is a material for manufacturing purposes. Okay. So carbon is also then can be called one material. But the point is that carbon can be it can have various crystal structures it can also have some mixed crystal structures hmm. or you know um, you probably know about hybridization so i know that um, in the in the high school textbooks you you learn very fundamental things about um, uh, hybridization and um, when i was in high school i i only learned about graphite and diamond but i understand that now they have also included a short write-up on fullerenes so this is very good now we already know we uh, we are familiar with the materials and then we are going to build upon that but anyway i'm going to also discuss some very fundamental aspects the point is that based on these hybridization states hmm, carbon can actually take different physical forms hmm, and you can also uh, do different manufacturing processes so for example you can have uh, you can uh, make fibers out of it or you can make nanoscale materials out of it Hmm. In fact, many of you, when you when you took this course, you must be thinking only in terms of carbon nanomaterials. Hmm. The first carbon material nowadays that comes to people's mind is graphene. Hmm. And then you also think about carbon nanotubes. And then you might think about fullerenes. These are um, these are the carbon materials that are very extensively studied nowadays. Hmm. So for research purposes, they are very important. But for industrial purposes, for manufacturing purposes. Still, the good old fashioned, um, you know, carbon materials like graphite and glass like carbons and activated carbons, these still remain very important. So what we need to know is we need to know about all of these materials. Hmm. And what we need to know is how can we change the properties of these materials? Can we also can we also design a new carbon materials? Can you come up with a new carbon materials? The answer is yes. If you understand your material at number one atomic number two molecular and number three crystal level hmm. so the carbon atom remains the same in all carbon materials irrespective of what is the scale at which you're using it or at which you're manufacturing it hmm. carbon atom and its properties remain the same hmm. what is different is the molecule and then accordingly the crystal structure may differ 
Hmm. What is a molecule when you have a lot of uh, atoms together and you know they form bonds and then that is how you um, you know get a larger unit which is more stable. In the case of carbon, you can have massive sheet-like molecules hmm? or you can have sphere-like molecules. You must have heard of C60, which is the Buckminster Fullerene. This is one molecule. Hmm? So in the case of carbon, these molecules can also be very interesting. And of course, the crystal structure, you know about diamond and graphite. So you know that crystal structure is dependent, uh, you know, it, it is uh, determined by the hybridization states and the shape of the orbitals. We are going to discuss all of these things. Hmm. But the point is that you can have, um, you know, different, completely different properties just because of this hybridization and this slight change in the crystal structure. Hmm. You can also have very different Mechanical properties, a certain carbon um, form will have a slip plane. Hmm. On the other hand, another carbon form will not have a slip plane. Hmm. In that case, you can have very different mechanical properties as well. So these are the things. Once you understand the carbon atom hmm, and then you understand carbon at a molecular level, what kind of molecules are actually possible hmm, or and or energetically favorable. Hmm. And then, of course, based on that, then you understand the crystal structure. So these are the things that we learn about not just carbon, but for any material when we talk about manufacturing processes. Hmm. OK, what is an atomic structure? Very simple. You know that there is an atom. It contains electrons and there is also a nucleus hmm. and nucleus has protons and neutrons. OK, there are many models of, uh, of um, so, for example, you must have learned about the Bohr's model. Hmm. where you have a circle, everything is spherical and circular and then you have electrons orbiting around the nucleus. Hmm. That is a very good representation for an easy explanation, especially in school, but that is not really correct. Hmm. So you don't have the orbitals are not really, you know, the orbits or the path that electron takes around the nucleus. That is not the case. So that is also one thing you need to, you know, forget about these models where electrons are orbiting around a certain, uh, you know, or they, they take a certain, um, let's say, circular uh, path. Hmm. That is not the case. What is an atomic orbital? Orbital is just a region in space where you have the highest probability of finding an electron. Hmm. So these are basically probability distributions. OK, so this is in, and we mathematically derive the shapes of these um, these uh, orbitals by solving the Schrodinger equation for hydrogen atom. So we have we just take a single electron system hydrogen atom because that's that's the easy way of solving the Schrodinger equation. And then based on that, we know that there are certain mathematically, you know, we derived shapes where you can find the electron. There is no real concept of the path that the electron will take. Hmm. Actually, in the case of electron, it's here and after some time it's here and then it's here and then it's here. We just really don't know how did it reach from one place to another place. OK, we don't know anything about the path of the electron. We also don't know anything about the shape of the electron. It can be just some crazy shape. We have no idea about it. In fact, if you're more interested in this, um, uh, these topics, then you can uh, probably um, uh, go through some of the uh, NPTEL lectures on quantum mechanics. Hmm. But the point is that um, electrons, so these are just probability distribution uh, functions, hmm, atomic orbitals. OK, now uh, maybe we will also maybe talk a little bit more about the orbitals when we talk about hybridization, hmm, because that is um, this is the easy way of understanding. Um, when you understand the orbital only, then you can understand hybridization. Hmm. OK, and especially in the case of carbon, because you may have some strange hybridization states which are sp x hmm. so we are also going to learn about them and then we will also that's where it becomes very important to understand that um, these are just discrete probability uh, density functions hmm. okay now we come to the molecular structure what is a molecular structure when you have two or more atoms coming together and they are forming a bond why do they form a bond they basically merge their energy levels so the orbitals are energy levels hmm. they merge them and they form a what is known as hybrid energy level in some case hmm. and if whether or not they form this hybrid energy level they do come together and that that gives them a more stable state hmm. that is the reason you form a bond because then you have a have a more uh, you know stable um, overall geometry and that is why you don't, it's not necessarily just two uh, atoms. It can be more than two. It can be 60 atoms also. If that is what gives it a more stable geometry, then you can have these bonds. 
and then you can form molecules. Hmm. Now, of course, um, you know that uh, what are um, elements and what are alloys and what are, uh, uh, what are um, compounds. Hmm. So here, this is a crystal structure of one element and this is a crystal structure of one compound. Hmm. So now coming to the third level, that is the crystal structure. It is something that is, um, you know, how the atoms are organized when they form a molecule. It's typically not one single molecule. There may be, you know, millions of such molecules. Hmm. And then this entire molecular geometry somehow needs to organize itself again to get an overall stable geometry, energetically favorable geometry. So every everybody wants to minimize their energy. Hmm. Um, but you, you want to sleep. Sleeping is your when you are you're in your minimum energy state. Hmm. You're not really very sad. You're not happy. You're not angry. You don't you don't have any emotions. You just you know that's your minimum energy state. And that is what um, everybody wants to get. And similarly, the molecules and, and uh, crystal structures, every every chemical structure also wants to attain the minimum energy state. Hmm. And that is what we also call thermodynamically favorable state. Hmm. And that is that is the direction it takes. Hmm. So it organizes itself. Hmm. So all the atoms and molecules, they would arrange themselves in such a way that they, they try to get that minimum energy state. And sometimes that is why you will have these repeating units and very regular um, you know uh, structures which you would call crystal structures and interestingly there is there are certain classes um, that actually uh, classes of crystal structures that can actually explain uh, or accommodate pretty much all the all the elements all the materials hmm. okay so this is a crystal structure hmm. now Crystals, can they always be, are they always uh, 3D crystals? So whenever we talk about crystal structure, what comes to our mind is a cube. Hmm. Because we have the face-centered cubic structures, we have um, base-centered cubic structures. And so what, what uh, often comes to our mind is something which is 3D. Even when we talk about a hexagonal crystal, we are, we are thinking in, in, the, in, in 3D, right? But it's not always the case. So let's say here um, I have drawn a crystal there you have like lots of cubes stacked on top of each other so you get a 3d geometry but if i just remove one layer hmm, the one that is shown with the darker color if i just remove this one layer then that becomes my 2d crystal crystal is nothing but a, an arrangement where you have repeating units you can also have that in in two dimensions hmm. so these are the kind of materials which are called layered structures hmm. and these kind of crystals are known as 2d crystals okay now you can also have a third thing which is known as semi-crystallinity. Hmm. So now it gets a little more, um, not complicated, but it's now it's a mixture of um, crystalline and non-crystalline materials. Hmm. So something called semi-crystal. So semi, you have polymers. So this is an example. You, you know about polymers. You, you know that they contain these chain-like structures. Some polymers may contain sheet-like structures as well. And here and there, occasionally, you know, some part of them, has this arrangement or certain type of arrangement, layered arrangement, let's say, certain part. But you see on both sides of this, uh, this, uh, um, you know, uh, the, what I have made the crystal geometry, both sides are then random. Hmm. So certain parts in the material will have this crystal uh, structure or certain arrangement. Hmm. And these crystal lights, the little parts where you have the arrangement, you will call them crystal lights. Uh, and these crystallites, however, in the bulk material, they are randomly oriented. So not all crystallites are then, uh, you know, arranged on top of each other or something like that. Then these crystallites are, are randomly oriented. So these kind of materials are known as semi-crystalline materials. Okay. Now, um, yeah, a single crystal can be just a few nanometers long or, uh, you know, in terms of size. Or sometimes you can even have several centimeters long single crystals. Hmm. So, for example, when um, you manufacture silicon, hmm, you you actually have single crystals that are several centimeters long. Hmm. So you can have crystals with or without defects. You can have crystals which are small, which are large, and different uh, crystal structures is, are what basically determine the properties of a certain material, at least when it comes to the manufacturability of that material. Hmm. Okay, so uh, now I will talk about, um, so we talked about crystal structure, hmm. but what is not crystalline, so what are the things that are not crystalline? Hmm. Are they always amorphous? So whenever you learn about crystalline materials, 
you learn about whether there is the, some materials that are crystalline with a no, nice order and the others are amorphous. Hmm? If I tell you how to define an amorphous material, hmm, that's not easy. You would think it's very easy, but it's not really easy because you can say that something that, uh, you know, uh, shatters on breaking is amorphous, but that's not completely correct. Okay, so three definitions, amorphous, crystalline and disordered materials. Hmm. So amorphous and crystalline, you know, disordered, you don't. Hmm. Okay, so is crystallinity first of all a physical property? Um, yes, yes and no. Hmm. It is a physical property because what you see in the, you know, it, it determines a lot of properties of the material, the physical chemical properties, but as such it is an arrangement. So you can say this is a physical arrangement of atoms, but that physical arrangement is, um, is uh, sort of uh, defined by the chemical uh, properties of the material, hmm. by the attractive forces uh, that the atoms have with each other by the nature of bonding. So it is both a chemical and physical property, but it is, it definitely influences the chemical behavior of a material. It definitely influences the electrical, thermal, all sorts of behavior of the material. Hmm. So as such, you can say it is a physical arrangement. It's a physical property, but the, 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 everything is, uh, you know, um, guided by the crystal structure of a material. Okay, so this means that you have certain order. Crystallinity means you have certain order in the material. Now, sometimes what you may have is, you will say that this material has certain fraction of crystallinity. Hmm. What is crystallinity? Crystallinity means the property that you have, you are a crystal. Hmm. That is your crystallinity. But now, Certain materials may not be completely crystalline, complete. So they may not be a single crystal. Single crystals, um, you know, large scale single crystals are relatively rare. Hmm. Even in nature, when you mine something, large scale single crystals are rare. Hmm. But what you can have is partial crystallinity hmm. or a certain fraction of the material, which is ordered like you also saw in the case of semi-crystalline materials, but also you can have this kind of order in elemental materials, not just in polymers, you can have not even when you, so in the case of uh, semi-crystalline polymer, you saw that there are chain-like molecules, but not you don't need to necessarily have chain-like molecules to have fractional crystallinity. Hmm. So some part of your material is crystalline and the rest is, what is it? Well, let's just call it non-crystalline. Hmm. The term amorphous needs to be used very carefully. Okay. Now, so crystalline material has a well-defined order. Let's see here. Here I have shown a picture. Hmm. What is this picture? There are these lines. What are these lines? These lines are basically planes. Hmm. These are crystal planes. So this is like a cross section of your uh, of your crystal. Hmm. And these lines are actually then they are, um, you know, going into the computer screen. So they are like planes. OK, so this is a crystal. You see that this is a very, very there is very nice order. You have lines with well-defined, uh, you know, distance between them. Hmm. So this is your crystal. OK, now the second type of type of material is the amorphous material. So as I said, the definitions of amorphous that you've learned, basically they all start uh, from this, you know, that the material is uh, it shatters on breaking. A lot of things can shatter on breaking. Even if you have a polycrystalline structure, polycrystalline means a lot of crystals. You have the material which has a very high crystallinity, hmm, which maybe more than 90%, you know, in, in terms of crystallinity, if you measure it, but each crystallite is very small. Crystallites are then on each other, they are randomly organized. They are not, one crystal is not exactly on top of another crystal or not exactly in the same direction. You can have very random directions of your crystallites, hmm. even that will, uh, you know, physically break. If you, if you drop it, it will shatter. It will not break according to a crystal plane, which is the property of a crystalline material. Hmm. You know that the metals which are crystalline, they have a certain plane. They, if you break it, they will, they will break, uh, you know, uh, uh, along that plane. Hmm. But amorphous materials, so how do you define amorphous materials? Amorphous materials basically have variable bond lengths between any pair of atoms. Okay, so this is like the formal definition, which you have completely random bond lengths. So if I have 1000 carbon atoms, then carbon one and two have certain bond length, two and three have certain something else, three and four have something else and, and so on. Maybe there is some, you know, the, the same bond length carbon number one and two have maybe carbon number 
67 and 68 also have the same bond lengths but overall what you get is a range of bond lengths then you call it an amorphous material so there is no order whatsoever hmm. so if you take a picture of the of an amorphous material um i don't know if it's very clear from here but what you see is like a gray area you don't really see because you know when you take pictures at this scale you're, you're using electron microscopy hmm. so you what you get is this kind of random picture where you cannot really differentiate you cannot say this is where my atoms are and this is where they are not hmm. so this is an amorphous material now what is the third type of the material hmm. disordered materials hmm. so disordered as the name itself suggests they are not ordered so they're definitely not crystalline hmm. but what you have is a short range order what does it mean you have crystallites but they are very short hmm. so the, there is an order but only for some time hmm. only for a very small distance so this is called a short range order so you have crystallites distributed through the material hmm. and they have certain orders so that they, you may increase that order by for example increasing the heat treatment uh, tem temperature we'll come to it for carbon materials this is very important so you see in this picture now i have taken the picture from the crystal crystal picture and the amorphous picture and this is like a mixture of the two hmm. so you have tiny little crystallites distributed inside an amorphous matrix hmm. and these crystallites now they may or may not be attached to each other you know they may not be connected to each other hmm. if you for somehow by tuning the manufacturing process if you can keep on increasing the size of these crystallites at some point they will touch each other then you call it a percolation point percolation means you know when you have this network formation inside a material once you have the network what is going to happen is you're going to have electrical conductivity in the material hmm. because you know that crystalline uh, materials it's not the case with all crystal uh, structures now huh? for example diamond is crystalline but it's still um, an insulator hmm. so but typically for many metals if you're uh, if you have a crystalline structure then and if you do have free electrons for electrical conductivity then if it is crystalline it will have higher electrical conductivity because you know it's a, there is a nice path for the electron to flow hmm. but in the case of amorphous you will not have that kind of electrical conductivity disordered materials will be somewhere in between especially when they have this percolation when they have a network of uh, of these tiny crystallites then electron can find a path electron can definitely um, you know propagate you can have you will have electrical conductivity maybe also thermal conductivity other properties but if you drop that material it's going to shatter on breaking hmm. so you uh, you don't call it crystalline but just because it shatters you also don't call it amorphous you need to now understand the material at its atomic and molecular level and crystalline level to say that this is neither amorphous nor crystalline this is a disordered material and a lot of bulk industrial carbons hmm, they are disordered materials hmm. so i think this is my personal opinion in the case of carbon if you don't know the exact structure microstructure of the material then just rather use the term uh, disordered rather than amorphous because carbon almost always has certain short range order hmm. okay so um well we will we will come to it hmm. okay um yeah so most of the carbon materials that are based on graphite and based on graphite i mean that you have sp2 hybridization at least to some extent not all the atoms are sp2 hybridized but you do have sp2 this is a primary hybridization state in your uh, material in that case i will call it graphite like material hmm, or sp2 carbon materials most of these sp2 carbon materials if they are not perfect graphites in that case they are often physically amorphous now the pictures that i showed you these uh, schematic diagrams huh, what what do they indicate hmm? what they indicate is the microstructure of a certain material microstructure basically would mean how does a material look like at a at a crystal level hmm. but this is not the formal definition of microstructure hmm. what do you see in those you saw the crystalline and amorphous phases hmm. crystalline and amorphous are phases of the materials hmm. we will also talk about them when we talk about the phase diagram so crystalline amorphous phases you saw but you also saw saw how uh, you know how are they associated with each other so uh, you know how much crystallinity you have in a material that you can see uh, when you see those kind of pictures where you see the microstructure of the crystal if you have certain defects 
you can also see the defects okay for example in the case of carbon if you have non six membered uh, sheets hmm, then you will see maybe you will not see the individual atoms but you will see that okay these are not perfect crystals there is a certain waviness in those crystals which may have uh, been because of uh, because of the defects because of certain so there is some disorder in the ordered material also so these kind of things you can see when you when you see the material at that scale then how do you actually define your microstructure hmm. in any material when you can see or you can analyze the phases plus the defects plus any residual stress all together you call it the microstructure now this term is a little bit unfortunate because it is called microstructure but in the pictures now you you know in uh, now we have very advanced electron microscopy techniques we have um, transmission electron microscopy for example you can have very high magnifications you can see the material very much at the nano scale hmm. even in, you know some very advanced tems will give you a, a even atomic scale images so you can definitely see the pictures of that um, you know scale but you don't call it um, nano structure you still call it a microstructure because the, the term microstructure was was coined when anything that was too small was just called micro even now we use the terms like you know micro management micro this micro that um, which basically just means very very small scale so same thing for microstructure so but you need to understand that when you when you're talking about the phases plus defects plus residual stress and stress and phases can be crystalline amorphous are also phases so that is your um, that is how your materials uh, microstructure is defined if you want to know more about um, the material and microstructure and these very fundamental uh, properties of materials um, then i strongly recommend this um, lecture by um, anand subramanian Hmm, that's for your further learning because in this top this uh, course we will not be able to talk about all the aspects of materials uh, crystal structure we'll mainly talk about carbon materials okay now because of the fact that microstructure um is it has the term micro in it sometimes it's also confused with micro scale structures hmm. so now nowadays we do all this micro fabrication and nano fabrication we make devices even that are extremely small that are in the micro scale uh, you know micro domain let's say hmm? uh, micrometer is 10 power minus 6 meter you know that hmm? so these micro scale structures are also sometimes they can be called micro structures hmm? because they are micro scale structures hmm? but don't get confused for a material scientist micro structure um is is the 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 phases defects residual stress hmm. but for a for a microsystems engineer or somebody who makes micro scale devices then it can be also micro scale structure so what we are going to do in this particular course in order to avoid any confusion when i talk about micro scale structures i'm going to put this hyphen hmm, micro dash structures then we are talking about a device and when when i write one single term micro structure then we are talking about well micro structure hmm okay now yet another thing is nano scale structures hmm, or nano materials hmm, you must have heard the term nano materials what is what is so special about nano materials isn't every material nano material hmm, because every material has some nano scale units which which are the fundamental or the building blocks of that material everything can be called a nano scale material hmm. so what is the what is the special thing about these nano scale materials okay now when we talk about nano crystals let's talk about the crystalline materials that are crystalline at nano scale then they are pretty much like what you had in a disordered carbon material or disordered material that i showed the except the fact that they are not inside an amorphous matrix hmm they are just there hmm they are just present so yeah this this image nano crystal powder hmm so this is where you see that you have these nano scale crystal structures it's important that they are in the nanometer scale hmm and then however they are um, each one of them is randomly oriented and in bulk form what you will get is a powder hmm it can be a 2d crystal it can be a 3d crystal any kind of crystalline structure which is very well defined hmm so we we intentionally made it hmm so this is also the the overall idea of nanotechnology is that okay there were things in the nano scale always there have been biological uh, things and everything has an atomic structure so we do have things that are in the nano scale everywhere hmm, around us but when we intentionally design a certain type of crystal or structure hmm, at a nano scale and then we are able to get what we designed hmm, then we call it 
uh, technology, then it's a technology. Also, the fact that we are able to characterize those materials, we are not just characterized, but we are able to utilize the properties of these nanoscale materials for technology, for technological applications. That is altogether nanotechnology. Hmm. So nanoscience is, is about understanding the properties of the material at nanoscale. And nanotechnology is when you utilize these nanoscale materials, hmm, let's say nanocrystals, for any te technological application. So for example, making devices, making, um, you know, coatings, making a lot of, uh, you know, functional structures and so on. Hmm. Okay, so nanocrystals, in bulk form so when you want to when you purchase a bottle of a nano crystal then you're going to get a powder hmm. now if you look at that powder inside a very uh, you know high magnification microscope then you're going to see these nanoscale crystals hmm. okay so typically when you want to do manufacturing with nanomaterials what you're going to do is you're going to you need to bind them together hmm. so you will not use a single nano crystal of this kind for a device you can there are uh, there are uh, examples there are this is where the research is you know moving forward how can uh, forward how can we utilize single nano uh, structures hmm, for technological applications but in general a lot of manufacturing is still done by mixing these nano crystals or the powders into a binder bind them and make something out of it hmm. then also you can still you can get the uh, functionalities if not all of them at least a lot of them the functionalities of the of your nano material that you designed and 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 prepared hmm. okay now um, you can consider them crystalline or amorphous that i leave it up to you hmm. because you see what it is it is crystalline at nano scale hmm. we prepared something that was crystalline huh it is because it is crystalline it's going to give you beautiful properties of a crystal it's going to give you whatever electrical conductivity you want but in fact at nano scale the properties become become very much more interesting now you see nano crystals will not have defects hmm? large scale crystals uh, or if you you know if you're doing manufacturing with cast iron the actual manufacturing materials they have a lot of defects hmm? we know that but nano crystals well they the, the defects will anneal out the defects will leave the material this, this the entire crystal is so small where will the defect if there are defects then this this makes it a very high energy uh, structure it will try to minimize its energy get rid of the defects so so many properties of the materials change at the nano scale hmm. and that's why they are very interesting materials the point is that do you call them crystalline or you call them amorphous if i take the bulk powder like i said i purchase a bottle of nano powder nano uh, material then i get a powder then that powder in bulk is amorphous amorphous you know physically amorphous that shatters on breaking if i also mix this nano powder into a binder hmm, all together that structure will also shatter on breaking hmm. but the properties that you get they are from the crystal so you can call them crystalline you can call them amorphous or you can call them uh, you know nano crystals so better to call them nano materials and nano crystals hmm. okay now um yeah there are um, like like i said that you can do manufacturing using uh, you know binding so this is a bottom up uh, manufacturing approach bottom up means when you add things one on top of another you also call it additive technique and top down approaches means when you remove material from you know um, you take a big block and whatever is the undesired material uh, then you remove that so those are called top down processes so often large scale manufacturing processes are top down because um, you know if you start making things then it's going to take a lot of time um, but there are also examples of large scale bottom up um, you know manufacturing you would not call it manufacturing let's say construction when you have a building construction then you have bricks one on top of other you know that that is that is bottom up process so also in the large scale you will have certain um, uh, bottom up processes for making things whether you call them manufacturing or not but typically for industrial you know tool manufacturing and so on you will use top down approaches when it comes to uh, large scale production of something hmm. but um, so this is the idea of uh, of a material and these are the things we are going to learn about carbon materials from next uh, lecture onwards we will talk specifically about carbon